Hello there, I'm a lovely jewelry makers. I'm Christina of CSL Designs, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you three different ways that you can capture a stone or crystal. Now, if you're specifically interested in a certain design, I'm going to leave timestamps in the description box below the video. Otherwise, if you want to learn how you can make any of these, then keep watching. Now, for all the designs, I'm going to be using a combination of my basic pliers. So, of course, we need some floss cutters so we can actually cut the wire. And then I'm using some chain nose and tweezer nose pliers to help manipulate the wire. And my six to bell making pliers for any loops we need to make. Of course, you can easily use round nose pliers instead. Now there's going to be useful links for these tools and the materials we're going to be using throughout in the description box below the video. Otherwise, let's get our tools ready and let's get started. So the first one we're going to make is a spiral wrap. So the wire we're going to need for this is a 0.8 mil and I'm using a regular round copper wire. And then of course we need the stone that we're going to wrap as well. Then I've cut a length of my wire of about 40 centimeters and you want to make sure the wire is nice and straight as well. Of course, the length that you're going to need will depend on the stone that you want to wrap. Now I want to find the midpoint of the wire, so I like to just bring in my measuring tape and I know it's 40 centimeters long, so what I'm going to do is find the about 20 centimeter point and then put my pliers onto there and that is of course going to be the midpoint of the wire. It doesn't have to be exactly, you can be a little bit off, but just so we have as even lengths as possible on either side. And then I'm going to take one end of the wire and basically push it over the top of the pliers, back over the top of the other length, so we get a bend like that and I want to then tighten this up so you can see we have a little gap where we have that bend and then right at the back of the pliers I'm going to place it sideways so I can basically tighten it up and make that gap as small as possible and then I'm just going to make sure to have my stone handy so I can keep checking on it so I'm grabbing literally right on that bend and then I need to start pushing the wire kind of around the pliers but not straight up against the pliers because we need to get it more of a rounded shape and I like to start out with the pliers because you can't really do much with your fingers here so so start to get kind of a curve in from that very end and then I like to also pretty quickly start to bring in the stone not that obviously it's going to be fastened yet but just to get an idea of where we're going with the twist so the very end of the wire there the bend it's going to sit at the very tip of the stone and then I'm going to use these ends to just keep twisting around the stone further up but we still just need to get the twist going a little bit more before I'm going to move on to the stone and actually capture it because there's not a whole lot to grip onto right now so it's just going to kind of keep sliding around on the stone so I'm just gonna start twisting it further around and make sure that I'm also kind of moving upwards with the wires so I'm not just twisting and coming straight back to the end there but I'm actually kind of moving upwards at an angle and again I'm just gonna keep referring back to the stone just to make sure everything sits properly and it fits so place the end of the stone down at the very bend we can start to get a feel for how it's going to sit and also we can then see what we need to adjust so I need to tighten up the wrap just a little bit more on this side over here and also I'm going to make sure that the two wires are laying flat next to each other the whole way so check in again put the point of the stone down to where the bend is and you can see it's starting to come around the bottom of the stone here and up the side so I basically want to keep going and also it's up to you how tight or how open you want the spiral to be obviously you can't make it too open because you don't want the stone to fall out but you can make it fairly open or fairly tight where it's completely up to you and the design look that you want bring the stone back place the point at the bend and see how we're doing and then whenever you feel like you have enough to hold on to so you can keep the wire on the stone there and then start pushing the wire around the stone you can just start doing that so like I said we use the stone itself as a guide to where the wire needs to go. So just keep pushing the wire around the stone, moving further upwards until we make our way towards the top. And just try and make sure the wraps have got nice even distances between them and also roughly the same angle if you can just to make it as consistent as possible we're up at the top now at the other point and you can then see the stone is nicely wrapped and it's securely in there because we wrapped the two narrow points so it's not going to be able to slip out on either end and then here at the top we just basically need to finish off the wire but also obviously add in a bale so we can use it for something so again I'm now just going back up to the top and then I'm kind of just going to flatten it out a little bit and I'm then going to take Take my tweezer nose pliers, place them right where that tip is on the stone and then bend the wires straight upwards so they come straight up and away from the stone and then I'm basically just going to make a loop with these two wires which is going to be our bale so I'm going to go a little bit above the bend I just did and then make another bend then I take my six step bell making pliers of course you can use your round nose pliers 
place that on that bend I just did and I'm using the second smallest step so it's a decent size loop we're making but not too large either and then just wrapping the ends here all the way around the pliers so we get a full circle like that and then I like to just put the pliers back in place to hold that circle in shape and then I'm just going to use these two tails to wrap around that little space you can see we have underneath so again I'm just holding the wires flat next to each other and then bring them around the wire underneath the loop and just wrapping them a couple of times and this is just to secure them in place and then once we've done a couple of wraps it's going to be nice and secure I'm going to then take my flush cutters cut off the excess of the wire like that get rid of that and then just my chain nose pliers and push these ends in because if you put your finger over you can just feel them so we want to make sure we just get those pushed in so they're not going to catch or scratch on anything so just kind of tuck them away among the other wires so there you basically have your finished wrap stone and we have the loop that we can use as a bail you can put whatever you want through chain or cord that's up to you but then you have a cute little stone wrapped in a pretty simple technique next we're going to be using the twisted wrap technique to capture our stone for this we're going to need a point formula wire and i'm using a regular round silver coated wire and again of course the stone that we want to capture and for this we need to cut three lengths of a wire of about 40 centimeters each of course it will still depend on your stone whether they need to be longer and also if it's say a bigger stone you could also use more wires than this so for instance four instead of three it'll be the same basic technique but first of all what I want to do is just take one wire at a time and we need to find the midpoint of all of them in this case I'm just going to put the ends together make sure they're even and then bring down towards where the midpoint is here you're going to find a little loop and then just kind of squish the loop together a bit and then I take my tweezer nose and squish them even more we don't need to do it so it's all the way tight so there's still a little bit of a gap but just so we have that defined midpoint so something a bit like that and i'm just going to do that with the remaining two wires as well so i did all three wires and now what we need to do is basically attach these together to create a starting point so just take two first of all and then we need to put one through the other and that's why we make sure to leave a little gap in that bend so not push it completely closed so i'm just going to put one end through the other like that and then we need to just bring in the final length here and i'm just going to the ends where i open them up i go over around the one that's outside of the other one and then upwards towards the other end here that's inside of it and I'm gonna go through that gap with the ends both ends make sure they go through from one side to the other and then I'm gonna pull it tighter and then we just want to pull all the lengths tighter so we kind of create this little triangle by attaching all these wires together and then just push them as tight as they can go and it's the same principle if you have four lengths you just want to do it with four attaching them together like this so we end up kind of with a square instead of a triangle and then from here what I'm going to do is start to separate the wires out so obviously we have two lengths coming out from each wire and I just want to separate them out to opposite sides and do that with all of them so we end up with something a bit like this now what we then need to do is start connecting the wires from the opposite pairs so these two here that are next to each other but they're coming from opposite pairs I can start with those and I want to basically put a twist in these so what I like to do is put the wires into my hand and hold on to them and then I put my finger between the wires and then I start to twist my wrist so that's one twist and you can see we're twisting them together which then kind of connects this more in place and fastens it twist it again and I like to do three twists. Of course, that all depends on what you want and how you want it to look. So you can do more or less. You just also want it to be secure enough that the twist stays where you want it to. So that's one. I'm gonna go around and do the others as well. So move to the next two that are coming from opposite pairs. Put your finger in between them, hold onto the wires in your hand, and then twist them three times and that is that one and do the same with the last one so this is going to be our starting point what i like to do now then is take my stone and just bring that in because we also want to start shaping this so it's obviously going to fit the stone so i'm going to put the end the very tip of it right in the middle where that triangle is where we connected all the wires and then i'm just going to start pushing the twists that we did up the side of the stone so just push them up so we end up with something like this you can see we'll be attached all the wires together that's going to be at the very tip of the stone then from here can move on to keep attaching our wires together because we need to capture more of the stone now i will be bringing the stone in and then making twist while i've got the stone in place but it's still a little bit fiddly yet so what i like to do is just do the next twists as well without the stone so two wires that are naturally next to each other here but they're coming from opposite pairs and i want to make sure i'm just leaving a gap so i don't want to pull them really close together i want there still to be a gap so obviously the stone will fit in there but again i'm starting a twist with my finger in between the wires so that's one once and twice and then I just want to do the third wrap so like that then I'm going to move around to the others and do the same so pick out the other wire from that 
pair and pick out the wire next to it from the next pair that we haven't used yet and then again put a twist between those and I try and make sure that the gaps here where we're creating the twists are as similar as possible that way we make it as even as we can and the final one we have two wires left that we haven't used put a twist into them as well again making sure we don't pull them too tight because we need to make sure the stone will fit in there and you can then see as well we've actually managed to tighten it up a little bit without making it too tight so hopefully that means the stone will fit so if you just push it into that little cage almost that we made for it obviously the point of the stone will sit where we attached all the wires together initially and that fits nicely so what we need to do now is continue this where we just want to take a wire from each pair that are next to each other and then we want to twist those together now it's still a bit fiddly with the stone in there so i'm just going to take it out again but making sure that when i twist these wires together that the opening or the cage that we're making, it kind of opens up a bit more again because we're moving from a narrow point to a wider point. And you don't have to worry too much, just make sure that it's gradually opening a little bit because the wire is still malleable. So when you push the stone in there, it will also shape around that. So we're making twist here with wires next to each other. And I'm just gonna take the stone again and push it in place. And this is basically how we wanna keep going. Now, what I'm gonna do is keep the stone in there because I have enough to hold on to. And I wanna make sure as well that I get the sizing right so I don't want to make the cage too tight and then we can't get the stone in or too loose. Again I'm just going to take two wires next to each other from opposite pairs and then I can also use a previous twist there as a guide to where to make the new twist. So just try and get them as even as possible. Make the three twists as straight above the other one as possible. Move to the next one. Grab the two wires. Start your twist and just keep pushing the stone in because you might want to slip out a little bit as we're working with it but just keep pushing it in place. Go all the way around. So that's basically another round of a twist using all the wires on this level moving up another level so you can see we're working our way up towards the other end of the stone so you just keep doing this all the way until the other end so i'm getting to the point now where it's going to be narrow again because we're moving towards the point so i'm just going to go around and do my twists again and this time just make sure it's kind of getting a bit tighter again as we're moving towards that point. So obviously on this end, we don't have the cage being too open. I'm doing the final twist, and then I don't have any more space to do more twists because obviously the point is right there. So what I'm gonna do now to finish this off is take all the wires and twist them together right up at the point there. And then I'm just gonna keep twisting them just a decent length because I'm then also gonna be making the bail with these wires. So. I have the twisted wires at the top. I'm then gonna take my tweezer nose and then going a little bit above where the twist starts, I'm gonna put a bend into it. And then I'm gonna take my six step bell making pliers. Again, you can use round nose pliers. I'm using the second smallest step. So it's a decent size for chain or cord or whatever you wanna use. Bring the rest of the twisted wires all the way back around. So we create a full circle there. That's gonna be our loop. I'm gonna place the pliers back in so it keeps its shape and then take the rest of them and wrap below the loop, just like that, until we basically filled out that space. And then we just want to take our cutters, go in and cut off the excess wire. And then we can take our pliers again and just squeeze them in. So we make sure they're not sticking out and away from the piece so they're gonna catch or scratch on anything. If you can feel the ends, make sure you just push them a bit more until you can't feel them when you put your finger over them. And here we then have our finished twisted wrap design capturing our stone. So as you can see, it's a pretty simple technique, but it's also very decorative and will fit so many different sizes and shapes of stones. And lastly, we have the tree of life wrap design. So for this, I'm gonna be using a 0.3 mil wire and this is a regular round silver coated copper wire. And of course, also the stone that we want to wrap. Then we need to cut some lengths of wires to work with and I have 10 lengths here about 40 centimeters each. You can also use more or less wires that's up to you and the size of stone that you're using. And we then need to make sure that all the ends are even and then I'm going to take a measuring tape here because I just want to find the midpoint. So the 40 centimeters long so at the 20 centimeter midpoint I'm just going to kind of grab onto that. And then just next to the midpoint, I'm going to then take all the lengths of wires here, they're all together, and I'm gonna start twisting them even more together. So kind of fasten them together with a twist here and just keep twisting and make the twist a little bit longer. So that's one side, and I'm gonna flip it around and then on the other side of the midpoint, which is not twisted, and about one to two centimeters. It all depends on your stone and how you want it to look. So basically this little area that we're not twisting, so the midpoint is gonna be the root of the tree, and then 
on the other side of the midpoint I'm going to twist the other ends in the same direction here. So here I have two twisted sections with a non-twisted section in the middle in between them and then what I'm just going to do is start to separate out the wires here in that midpoint a bit. So the non-twisted wires. So you just want to kind of pull them apart a little bit and they're not final yet but we just need to make sure they get separated so we have a bit more of a surface area here because this is then going to catch one end of our stone. So the very point of it, I'm going to put down in that non-twisted area and then I'm going to push the two twisted lengths up the sides of my stone. And then these wires here at the bottom are going to be the roots. So we don't need to worry too much about how it looks yet because we just need to make sure we capture everything. And then we can always go in and adjust things at the end. But then from here, we got the tree trunk coming up from the roots, going up the sides of the stone here on both sides. Then we want to start making our branches as well. So to do that, I've got my twist going further up than I want the tree to be but what I can do is just literally go in and start undoing the twist and I just like to do that with one length of wire at a time kind of just gradually undo it and bring it down to where I want the branches to start coming out from so something like that it's gonna be my first branch separate out another wire do the same thing undo that twist till it comes down to the starting point where I want the branches to start and this one I'm going out to the other side because obviously I want it to kind of look like a tree as well so branches going out to the sides and upwards and basically I'm just going to be undoing the wires here in the twist gradually one at a time and you just want to do that with all the wires until you're happy with more or less how all the branches are going to sit and of course we just need to flip it around and do the same with the wires on the other side so now I have all my branches separated out on both sides as you can see and it looks a little bit wild and messy but we're just going to take it slowly a bit at a time. What I'm then going to do is start to collect all the branches together again but along the sides. So I'm going to start from the bottom here and just on one side the very bottom branch on this side I'm going to bring it out to the side here and the bottom branch on the other side and I want to take these two and basically connect them together right on the side of the stone and do that by just twisting them as well just a couple of times or something like that and then I like to just flip it around and do the same thing on the other side just to have it a little bit more securely in place so again I take the bottom one on this side and the bottom one from the other side bring them to the same side here and start to twist them together again just a few times and we're making this twist go up the side of the stone so it's a little bit more securely in place because I've done those twists so we can kind of let go without everything falling apart but then from here we need to gather one branch at a time basically working our way upwards along the side here and adding them into the twist as we go so I'm going to take the next one and add that into the twist and of course also don't forget the ones from the other side and I keep twisting everything in the same direction and you can either continue up one side and complete that or you can kind of flip back and forth to make sure it gets even and you're not accidentally pulling it too far in one direction or something like that so bring that next branch into the twist and do the one from the other side as well and just make sure that the twist ends up laying right up against the side of the stone and you can then also in some cases take two wires that are coming out so separate branches and just twist them together first and then then have them coming out separately and then just take one of them at a time it just gives it a little bit of a different look a little bit more organic instead of all the wires being individual branches so again I'm twisting from the other side working our way up and obviously because I have 10 lengths here what I want to aim for is getting five lengths of the wires on either side here on this side and then the other five lengths on the other side so it's evened out nicely and obviously towards the top we want to have the wires come a bit more upwards so that's pretty much the one side done I'm going to flip it around and then just finish off all the branches on this side as well. What I'm then going to do is the two separate twists here. We're going to bring them together at the top and then I'm literally just going to twist all the wires together again and I'm just going to keep twisting this so we have a nice length available because then we also need to use that to make the bale with and for that I'm then going to take my tweezers and pliers and go up just a little bit above where they started twisting together then just make a bend backwards there. Then take my six to bell making pliers and I'm going to use the second smallest step. You can use round nose pliers. Put that on the bend and then bring the rest of the twisted wires all the way around so we create a full circle and then I like to put the pliers back in so it holds its shape and then I'm going to take the rest of the twisted wires here and bring them around a few times below the circle to basically fill in that gap that we left. We can then take our flush cutters, go in and cut off the excess. So just cut straight through all the twisted wires and then and now you'll find that it's sticking out a little bit so we just want to make sure that that gets pushed in 
and kind of tucked in between the other wires there so it's not sticking out and if you just put your finger over it and you can't feel it then that's fine if you can feel it a little bit of scratchiness you just need to push it in a little bit more but then that's basically the bail in place so you can obviously see we have that circle we can put a chain or a cord through now technically we finished capturing the stone but personally i do prefer to add a little bit more interest to this so what i like to do is take my tweezer nose pliers and i kind of like to start from the roots so all these wires that we didn't twist in that non-twisted section there those are the roots and i like to kind of take my tweezer nose and go in and add a bit more life so i just grab onto one wire at a time and basically twist it in different directions just gently we don't need to twist it too much or anything just adding a bit more life to it and also kind of making it fit nicer around the stone because if some of them are sticking out a little bit and when i'm then happy with the roots i can move on to the trunk itself because i prefer it's not too straight if you add a little bit of life into that it's also going to give it more interest and personality i feel so again just grabbing in some different places and just twisting the pliers just gently and then when I'm happy with how they look we can move on to the actual branches so same principle I just start with one at a time go in and add my tweezer nose pliers to a place and just kind of gently twist it in one direction and then move your pliers a bit twist it in a different direction and you can see that just instantly makes it a little bit more branch like as well and I'm just going to go around and do this on all of the branches and this is then what mine looks like when I finished all the branches as well so you can see adding all those twists and turns really makes a difference to the piece but otherwise this one is then finished as well and you can just add your chain or cord through the bale and then you have a cute pendant ready to wear so that's how you can capture a stone or crystal of really any different size and shape using three different designs that look pretty intricate but are actually pretty easy to make so i hope you enjoyed the tutorial for these different designs now if you want to check out more tutorials for any kind of jewelry you can think of and also within loads of different mediums i have literally hundreds on my channel that you can check out so feel free to subscribe otherwise i really hope you enjoyed this one thank you so much for watching it and i'll see you in the next one